there's nobody better to talk about curbside service than one of the owners of multiple uh, Sonics, for those of you out there. Um, so please, everyone, help me in welcoming Mr. Paul Reeser. Hello, LinkedIn. Welcome to my LinkedIn Live. And uh, I can't wait for you to meet my guest. So drop a hello in the comments. Give it a like. Share it with your friends. Share the feed. Let me know where you're tuning in from. So today I want to share with you all about curbside customer service in the COVID-19 era. And um, before I bring my guest on, I, I wanna give a huge shout out to all the local restaurants and people in food and beverage and retail that are having some really, really challenging times right now. I personally love to go out and eat and, and it's, it really saddens me to see some of my local haunts, which I still do take out, um, but just really struggling. And when I met this person, this guest on Video Marketing World through Scott, I thought to myself, what a great way to bring in someone that's always done curbside, because right now a lot of it is curbside and delivery for our food and beverage and retail, um, though we are opening up a bit in Texas. Um, there's nobody better to talk about curbside service than one of the owners of multiple uh, Sonics, for those of you out there. Um, so please, everyone, help me in welcoming Mr. Paul Reeser. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hey, Fanny. Terrific. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join me on this LinkedIn Live. I so appreciate oh, your time. Yes. No, thanks for the invitation. For sure. So for those of you out there, I just want to read a quick introduction about Paul. One of the Paul started his career 25 years ago, managing a Sonic drive in restaurant in Bozier City, Louisiana. Did I say that right? Bozier? <laughs> Bozier. Bozier. It's, it's Bozier. It's kind of French. You know, we're North Louisiana. Not uh -huh. real, real French, but Yes, it's so, French. so I gotta like give it like a French yeah. Bozier City, yeah, Louisiana. Yeah. Today he is president of Reser Group Management Company, which owns and operates 38 Sonic drive-ins across four states. Paul is very active in the Sonic community nationally, serving on the National Franchise Advisory Council. And he's also active locally where he serves on the advisory board of LSUS School of Business. And um even though he's been in the Sonic business for most of his life, he does not know the two guys on the commercial. <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, they are cool guys. Um, and he doesn't know how to roller skate. What? No. Nope. <laughs> uh, he does, however, know how to be successful in customer <clears throat> service, leadership, and increasing your influence. So everyone, please join me in welcoming Paul to the feed. Yay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about yourself, Paul, and how'd you get into this world of Sonic? I know, right? I know you've got authors, professional authors and media <laughs> people. I mean, it makes total sense. You'll have a guy that's been flipping hamburgers for 30 years to come on your show, so. I love it, um, I love it. We learn from <laughs> everyone. <laughs> yeah, actually it's a family business. My dad got in when I was a kid, 1976. You know, Sonic is a Sonic is a franchise business, and some of your folks might be from not near close to Sonics, but um, it was one of the original drive-ins, and we we're the first drive-in to have a speaker system. So, yeah. um, been around since 1953, but we got in in this in the 70s because my dad was one of those guys that always wanted his own business. Super poor guy. Um, he was seven of eight kids, and uh, he got into the business just because he was always trying to get ahead somehow. So when we finally got into the business, we were one of those families, like the whole family works. I'm the youngest of five. So wow. uh, I was car hopping when I was 12 years old. So 
Uh, but it's, you know, it was totally Did your friends illegal. friends try to hit you up for free drinks? <laughs> uh, friends. We had no friends. We worked. Uh, oh, yeah. There's not a person I've ever met that hasn't hit me up for free drinks. So. <laughs> really oh, by the way. So, yeah. Come on. Cheers. <laughs> That's my girl right there. Boom. <laughs> I'm, I'm having the strawberry limeade right now. It's so Very good. Nice. I love the little pieces of strawberry in there. Mixologist you are. Uh, but no, we, so we grew up in the business, uh, always working, but I was in business for my, you know, I was doing a deal with dad and my brother was doing a deal with dad. We we're all kind of doing our own thing. Yeah. And long at one point I said, we kind of all said, you know, if we formed a company, well, we could really do better. So we formed a management company. And over the next 10 years, we went from 13 stores to 38 stores. Wow. And so that's kind of been the bulk of, of what we've been doing. So we are in four states. We've got in North Louisiana mostly and South Alabama, but we are, uh, we were doing curbside when curbside, uh, well, it was cool, but yeah, uh, we never dreamed cool. <laughs> that we would be the preeminent business model in case of pandem pandemics. So yeah. it just worked. Who knew, right? Who yeah. knew? And I must admit, when I first, so today I did a little homework, okay? Yeah, there you go. Research. <laughs> For once, you seem like such I, a slacker. <laughs> I took my kids to my local Sonic because in preparation for our call today and mm -hmm. it was 1 40 p.m here and i drove mm. into that driveway of my local sonic and it was yeah. probably 80 percent full 80 yeah. percent full we live in suburbia and like mm -hmm. it's 1 40 it's not even lunchtime or meal time and it, mm -hmm. i swear it was 80 percent full and it's amazing. Like, what what have you been noticing lately about about Sonics? Well, people definitely are trying to get out of their house as much as they can. A friend of mine actually told me that every Sunday night he goes he goes on a date with his wife to Sonic because it's the one thing in his life right now that is that is still the same. It's still normal to him, mm. and I thought that was a great thing. But what we're noticing, well, of course, the cool thing about Sonic is we have most a lot of restaurants that open for lunch and maybe even close in the afternoon, open back up for dinner. But Sonic, we have breakfast, we have lunch, we have happy hour afternoon. If you'd have been there 20 minutes later, you would have got your drinks half price. Oh, darn. Uh, <laughs> now you tell me. On. Yeah, I can help you out. <laughs> yeah, um, but so we have an afternoon day part. We have a dinner day part. Uh, and then we have a late night where a lot of people come in and get ice cream at night. It's kind of your ice cream spot. So the, cool, the great thing about Sonic as a business model is it just kind of has a nice smooth throughout the whole day. So you have different offerings for all the different parts yeah. of the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. I mean, when I took my kid, when I told my kids we were going, like you would think mm -hmm. they were going to Disneyland because <laughs> they started getting all like excited and like yeah, thinking yeah. About what they're going to have. And I think my daughter ordered a, a, a m ms Sonic what shake last 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 i don't know all the terms yeah, no, it's a, no yeah. problem it's hey come here call it whatever you want m, &M something we bring it out oh, and my son had a grape slushy so they were happy oh. super happy there's over a million eight hundred thousand drink combinations you can get at sonic wow i've had most of them wow wow okay a funny thing happened like when we met each other in the comments of the right. virtual conference of video yeah, marketing yeah. world. And mm -hmm. from there you reached out to connect and I looked at your title and it said some, I just saw Sonic and being the mm -hmm. geek that I was, I thought you're with some like audio company. <laughs> and that and, would make sense. Don't beat yourself up, Fanny. So, it was so a video where, did the, where did the Sonic name come from? So, yeah, I mean, yeah, people get me confused. I have people watch my videos and they give me a big thumbs down. I'm like, when I look at their profile and they thought it was Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, uh, so Sonic does a lot of things. But back in 1953, uh, what was going on in the world, Fanny? Planes, jet planes were flying. When jet planes break the, break the speed of sound, what's that called? Sonic, Sonic boom. boom. Come on. <laughs> so uh, Sonic is serviced with the speed of sound. We we're the first ones to use the push button. You ordered a sound. And at the same time, the Sonic boom. So that's what Sonic means. Wow. There you go, folks. Come that's on. Now you've learned about something about valuable. Sonic. Yes. <laughs> I did. I did. And just, oh, look at this. Sanchit's favorite is Oreo shake with peanut butter. Sarah's favorite is cherry limeade and vanilla Dr. Pepper. 
Glenn's uh-huh. favorite is bacon double cheeseburger. Sharon's favorite is two corn dogs, always. Oh, look at that. Reminds me of being at the state fair, Sharon says. So it gives it like a little nostalgia, right? I love it. it is. I, lo- I love that Sarah put that you can add vanilla because it is. That's that's how you come up with over a million drink combinations because all the flavor add ins. Glenn, yeah. let me recommend some chili and jalapeno peppers Ooh. on your double cheeseburger and some bacon. Spice. And just for fun, as I'm throwing it all, I mean, you know, I just, we're going to make everybody hungry. And just for fun, <laughs> Next Thursday, if you use your app, I mean, this isn't supposed to be a commercial, but it is. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. Tell us. Tell so us. So it is. So uh, Thursday, next Thursday, a little behind the scenes. If you if you have your app, uh, you'll be able to get corn dogs for fifty cents oh. next Thursday. Okay, you heard it All here that. first. <laughs> LinkedIn yeah, yeah. Live with Fanny, the what insider scoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thought you were well. going to get LinkedIn advice, end up fifty cent corn dogs. It's a win. <laughs> To win. Advice, corn dogs. You know. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's do a little pivot right now, and um, let, let's let's take a little serious turn, okay? Because we are in a challenging time right now, Paul. And um, oh, really serious. Okay, you got yeah, me. yeah. Let's shift. We're going 180 <laughs> degree shift. Um, okay. Like from your perspective. Right. You're you've definitely been in this business for a long, long time. Um, Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing right now in the restaurant and in fast food industry? Right. Um, It I mean, it is it is a big challenge. Like I say, we're very, very fortunate. Um, Mm -hmm. We have we have the business model of um, you. It's curbside. Everything's curbside for us. So we haven't had to change our uh, system at all, yeah. except we had to show, uh, close our picnic, uh, our patios. Um, mm-hmm. So we're very fortunate. But the big challenge is, uh, you know, our employees, they're they're scared, just like people don't want to go out. A lot of our employees don't want to come to work and I don't yeah. blame them. Um, yeah. Especially we have a lot of kids, their parents want them to stay home. So so uh, labor is a huge issue and the supply chain is really crushing everybody. Um, Are so, you having trouble getting some supplies or some food items? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and the supply chain, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, there's food out there and there is, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cows in the pasture, but yeah. the problem is, is the processing plants have reduced all their capacity because, you know, people were getting sick in the, in the plants yeah. because they have huge processing plants now are huge. You know, yeah. one plant might do 5% of the whole, you know, all yeah. the meat in the whole country. Hamburger, right? Ground yeah, beef yeah. was low, right? Ground beef. And mm-hmm. uh, so, so what happens is they're they're having to uh, separate the folks, have have put the glass shields between them. So even if people are showing up to work, there's much lower capacity. Um, sure. So everybody, so Wendy started closing right away uh, yeah. and took meat off their menus, yeah. uh, and it's really hurting the full service uh, restaurants the worst because yeah. they just they just don't do curbside. They're not used to it, so they're having to adapt, having to learn what to do. And even if they look super busy. I promise you that line of 15 cars out front is nothing compared to the 26 tables they're used to having inside. So it's a huge challenge. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Now we did, I mean, I remember when we were talking, right? Location also plays a factor, right? Cause right. some locations are doing awesome and, and some locations are being hit hard. Share with us some, what you're right. seeing across different locations. So I, I always try to put my locations at a destination. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's like, you're going to put it, you know, in front of a grocery store, in front of a Walmart, uh, near a college, near a hospital, all these things that, that draw people. Cause you don't want to, you might be on a busy, busy road, but if everybody's going 65 miles an hour, they're not going to stop. It doesn't matter. So mm-hmm. our location is always a destination. Well, the challenge is right now, uh, if we are next to a hospital, for instance, early on, especially, uh, or next to a Walmart, you're so busy. But our call, our our uh, stores that are close to colleges or right on the state line, mm-hmm. and we're expecting highway traffic. Those are those are you know hurting real bad. Right. Yeah. So, and uh, and all, like you say, it's location, location, and then yeah. one day locations just completely change. So when nuts. college let out two months early, that's really crushing my college stores. That's nuts. I have uh, one comment we got from Sanchit. He says, I like particularly that the order is handed out into the car where you park rather than driving out and then parking again to eat. So you get to just kind of like eat right then and there. Um, right. 
<laughs> Sonia says, we're making her hungry right now. Come on. Ryan says, his kids are begging for corn dogs now. <laughs> yeah, these are smart kids. I can tell these are smart people on your on your list yeah. here. I mean, speaking of like, you know, the service that we get at Sonic, right? What do you think overall defines great customer service? I mean, you've been in the service industry for, for decades. Like, what makes right. it different? So the number one thing I try to explain to our folks about great service is great service is just the opposite of being selfish. Um, it's about serving other people. So if a person walks in and you're on your phone or you're not paying attention, that guest doesn't feel served at all. They feel neglected, you know? So, I mean, so on a, on a broad, broad, broad uh, spectrum, good service is about, you know, serving and not being selfish. But for, and it, and it also depends if you're talking about a white tablecloth. I mean, I went, the best service I ever had, went to London, went to, um, um, oh my gosh, I can't believe I can't think of the name of it. Anyway, uh, Ramsey, uh, Gordon Ramsey's, oh, this yes. is the boy. Good yes. Lord. Now that's good service, but wow. everybody's not going to pay 350 bucks a meal, you know, for at Sonic. So you know, it's geared back. So what is the expectation for where you are? Number one, it's got to be clean. Uh, it has to be friendly and you have to get what you want. Right. So that's the bare minimum to me. But then are we fast? Are we friendly? Are we smiling? Do we go the extra mile? If there's a problem, do you actually look at that guest? Every uh, what we tell our folks, we have a sign in every store that says the answer is yes. What's the question? Uh -huh. So when a guest has a problem, uh, they, they may say, do you have nachos? And we don't have nachos, so we can't say yes. But mm -hmm. we always say, the guests, they, they have a problem. If they have a problem, we're going to figure out how to solve it. So that's our deal. Yeah. Uh, Ann Small from LinkedIn says, I like when they ask what car you're in ahead of time. So they come out to you and you don't have to call again. Love it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Ann. That is yeah, and that and that's the big challenge too. And you maybe want to talk about that is what other people are trying to do. Yeah, yeah, like you know. So overall, like, what's your advice? So right now, I know that you know Texas at least is kind of slowly going back to business. Mm -hmm. I think it's anywhere from twenty five <clears throat> to fifty percent. But as people are still cautious around things and they still want curbside or delivery, any advice you have for people for that's not used to serving people curbside, like right. how do you enhance the curbside customer service? Right, I mean, that, and that's the big challenge. And, and that you ask what's the big challenge for restaurants that are facing right now. It is when they do get back to normal, they're gonna be reduced to a maximum 50% capacity or 25% capacity. And you know, the, the margins on a restaurant are so thin. Well, the margins in most businesses are so thin but especially a restaurant. So if you've got 50% reduction in your capacity in your dining room, you're gonna to have to uh, enhance your curbside service. So what are they gonna be able to do? So like I said, for us, we're just fortunate. That's what we've always done. So we're- You're all set up. We're, we're gonna have a great advantage mm -hmm. uh, for, for a long time, foreseeable future. Yeah. Uh, but everybody needs to say, well, what, what can we do? So what I would recommend if, you, if you're on this call, if you're, if you're interested in, in enhancing your curbside Thanks. service, is the first thing you gotta do is, um, I just, I go and, and shop other place, places. You know, you go to Chick-fil-A, uh, next to Sonic, they've gotta be the best mm -hmm. at a curbside service. Mm -hmm. But, so what are we looking for? When you're looking at, at curbside service, if you'll notice right now, the lines are super long. So what you gotta do is you've gotta expedite people getting through that line quickly because people don't want to wait. So wow. again, if I go to the Chick-fil-A model, uh, they meet you as you come in and they'll walk along with you with the, you know, with the iPad and they're taking your order. Uh, wow. There's a great restaurant here in town that is a, a Mexican restaurant and they have cones set up. So when you drive in, if you've already called ahead, they send you one direction. If you need to place your order, they send you another direction and they constantly keep you moving. And um, as long as you're moving, you can wait 10 minutes and it doesn't feel like anything. That's true. Um, then, and another thing is they're doing Olive Garden is they're taking people's orders and they're getting them to move forward. They're setting up, they're setting up places to get people out of that line. But the main thing you gotta do is when you, when you send them to a new place, that place needs to be spotless clean. 
Because when they get to that spot, if you're sitting and you're waiting, you've got time to look over and see, oh, there's some grease on the ground there. Well, there's right. some spider webs. So the longer they wait, the more they think you're dirty. So that spot had better be spotless clean. Mm. But the main thing is moving people quickly, engaging them right away, letting them, you know, let them know you know they're there. Yeah. And then keep them moving, keep them engaged, and then figure out everything you can do to make it faster, faster, faster. Because people want it to be good. They want it to be right but they really want it to be fast. So the fast is the one that wins. Yes. And even like today when I was doing my research, Come on, you <laughs> I, can research I, I every day. In and, and I noticed little things like that stood out for me. Right. So I mm -hmm. noticed, you know, obviously I hit the button and order. Right. But then as soon as I completed my order and swiped my credit card, then I saw like a progress bar. Right. Because right. it was like mm -hmm. um, order received and then it started flashing um, something kitchen. Right. Order kitchen preparing yep. or something like that. Right. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. like what was the last one? It, it arrived. So your order's on your way. On Terry, her way. Terry, Terry is on her way with your order. Yes. So it had yeah. the progress bar and yep. it showed me the um, the attendee that's about to bring out my food mm -hmm. and then had a name. So then like right. my kids kind of piped in and said, you know, so-and-so is coming <laughs> and they like right, right. You know, shouted out her name. Right. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like, it kind of gave me the progress, which mm -hmm. I liked. Right. Again, like to, to your point about just keep people engaged. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't mind waiting cause I know it's in the kitchen and then it's mm -hmm. coming out and the server's coming. Right. right? Yeah, um, we put a priority, we put a priority on answering the speaker. Once a person hits that speaker, yeah. uh, they want to know if, I mean, people have such short attention spans now. They're yeah, like three seconds now. Uh, so once you hit that button, that's why now the button flashes when you push the button. And then once we order, we need to order within 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, and then once you've ordered, people will start using their phone or whatever. But um, yeah, technology is a huge key now in everybody's industry. I mean, people think, well, it's old fashioned hamburger stand. It hasn't changed since the 50s. But no, we've come on. One thing we were we were cutting edge in the '50s because we had serve we had sound, which yeah. we just basically they just went and ripped some speakers off from a drive-in theater and hung it on the speaker stand. Brilliant. But yeah. but there was there was cutting edge. Okay, yeah. and then we put uh, credit cards in the in the speaker, and now we have a video monitor on the speaker to tell you where your progress is, interacting with an app, and everybody you know Domino's Pizza does the same thing. You order online, it tells you where it is. Um, everyone is using technology keep their guests engaged and to try to get their attention all the time. For sure. A and lot of this, we have a, uh, <laughs> I know I talk a lot with my hands <laughs> and small had a question. She said, how do you hire people that will um, only go the extra mile with custom customer service? How do you find those like wonderful customer service people? How do you spot them? Oh man, that's my secret. I can't tell you. No. <laughs> Come on, just us and a few <laughs> folks on LinkedIn. That's all. So, you know, and and we do have really good service scores at our at our restaurants. Um, and it's interesting. It's, it's we're not perfect. I mean, I I tell our folks this is what we want to do, and I try to be that example. But we've got thirty eight Sonics. We've got fourteen hundred employees. It's not always that great. But the the biggest key for me is to hire nice folks. Um, my managers are nice. My supervisors yeah. are nice right. and they understand customer service, guest service. And so they're going to be around, they're going to surround themselves with more of those kind of people. But it is the biggest challenge in our industry right now uh, is trying to find folks, you know, anyone that will go the extra mile Boy, well, that's tough. So um, those people that do, you really just got to really point that out, really appreciate that. You know, there's um, uh, any behavior, that if you ignore it, it goes away. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're doing good and you ignore it, that'll go away. If they're doing bad and you ignore it, well, that'll that'll get more and more. So you need to address every behavior. If it's great, say, oh, that's so fantastic. Thanks so much for coming in early. Thanks so much for helping out. You know, here's here's some pizza for everybody tonight. But if a person messes up, you need to tell them very quickly too, hey, that's not the way we do things here. Uh, but as far as recruiting, once you do find a good person, you got a friend, you got a sister. You know, you gotta get those <laughs> yeah. people 
to bring their friends. should attack the like-minded people, right? And yeah. you really got to protect those good folks because sometimes the good folks come in that really go that extra mile and everyone else feels threatened. So people will try to make it hard on them. So you got to protect them without making them look like a favorite mm -hmm. uh, just by training them up and keeping them with your, on your, um, on your schedule. That's and a good then point. once you start to grow those good folks, then they'll attract more of those same, same like folks. For so sure. the great people hate to work around bad people. And um, if you don't do something about it, the great people will leave. I noticed I was watching some of your YouTube channel uh, and later on we'll get into that around content creation. But, but mm -hmm. one thing that stood out for me was like, you were <clears throat> nurturing this one staff because another thing, another cool thing about Sonic is that you guys are on roller skates, right? And sometimes, um, <laughs> sometimes. but you had this one guy that was like the national champion, right? And you were helping him create a video. Did, is that what I yes. saw? Tell us the story yes. around that. Speaking of video that. content and video creation and how you use that. So um, one thing that Sonic does, it tries to be, you know, the brand is, is fun. So we're trying to enhance fun, right? And one thing that we do is we try to have skating car hops and that entertains the guests too. When you come to a Sonic and you see people skating around, that's kind of, that's entertaining. It makes it seem fun. more fun. And when the car hops skate to the car, they make a lot more money. Uh, they make better tips. And so what we've also found, Sonic has done all kinds of measurements and, and, and statistics. And they find out that when, when you have skating car hops, everything seems better. It's faster. It's friendlier. The food tastes better. It's cleaner. So that's partly because managers, <laughs> managers with good with skaters are also usually good managers. Um, but anyway, so to promote that, Sonic has a national skating competition. And yes, we have that video um, on my made the making I'll of the video. I'll see it up later. Yes. <laughs> my, my partner and I, um, we love to make videos. Okay. So Glenn Cox, come on. Um, makes great videos. So, so another thing that we do is, okay, so any of our car hops that want to make a video, we'll go to their store and we'll make videos. Matter of fact, we're going to go to Alabama next week and make videos for car hops that want to, that some of them, they're not going to win. You know, you're not going to place, but it gives us a chance to interact with them, have fun, be at the store where we're not the boss, where the guy's making videos. Um, but what Sonic is doing is they're trying to get people to skate. So they have this national competition. You, you put your video, you make a video and you put it on YouTube. So now, hey, all their friends are watching that video on YouTube about skating. So hopefully that's going to attract more visitors, yeah. more uh, uh, people, and also people who want to skate come work for us. And then they take the top five, voted on, you know, they choose five from the videos, take them to Oklahoma City in August, have a competition. Then they take those to our national, uh, to, um, What's that called? Where we get together national convention mm -hmm. and the winner gets a thousand bucks. Second place gets 500. Third place gets 300. They all get roller skates, but along the way they have a lot of fun. And Josh Tucker, uh, one of our skaters in Dothan, Alabama, he's now he's a manager for us down there. Uh, but yeah, a couple of years ago, he won the gold medal, baby thousand wow. bucks and a pair of skates. Okay. I, I have to share with people right now because I think we're getting them all excited about see. And, and in a way, like I think that, that also indicates that's culture, right? I mean, like right. in the corporate speak, right? There's employee culture, right? And employer culture, like how do you nurture a culture of fun, right? And right. you, okay, I, since we're talking about this, we have to play this. We really do. I can't hear it. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? No. Let me... Go back. <laughs> oh, I can't hear it. It's pretty fun. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Hey, Please there's pause. Steve McCann's in the that just jumped on. Hey, Steve. He is a awesome Sonic franchisee as well out there. Oh, go back to the beginning. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Hold on. Please pause. <laughs> okay. Did you jump you a person last year? I jumped you. Can you hear it now? Oh, no. Yeah, oh, I, told oh, him, oh. I told him I jumped you. Y'all the same height. Well, oh, you no. can jump Glenn. That's fine. <laughs> I, thought you thought, I thought you were talking about me. <laughs> so there you go. But then we go into the making of the video. Because um, what Sonic is looking for is um, 
they're looking for one, you know, is it a great car hop? So yeah. the interaction at the, at the car, the interaction, um, with the guest, you know, how, what's their knowledge, but then also, so are they going to get this? So, um, you know, and, and you had a person on here who is a, who is a franchise. Somebody was in there. That's a franchise consultant mm -hmm. early on. So the, the advantage of a franchise and a really good brand like Sonic, um, cause people ask me all the time, they say, should I start my own business or should I get a franchise? And I'm like, well, there's a lot of advantages to both, but the main advantage of a, of a franchise is you have great marketing. Hopefully you have great marketing and you have a system that's already been done. Right. But what Sonic is doing for us is they are helping us, you know, with these kind of, you know, this kind of national competition. That's something that I wouldn't be able to do on my own if I just had two hamburger stands, you know, but right. this brings like a lot of energy. And also they bring great ideas. For sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. And I mean, since we jumped into YouTube, like tell us a little bit about your, your social media content journey as the Sonic guy, right? Talk about branding that, right. that really sticks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell about Steve, your social don't look, man. <laughs> um, Okay. Like I said, for me, I love video. I just, I like making video. I'm always looking for ways to use it for training in our stores. And um, I realized that it is definitely something, a way to differentiate yourself and a way to use the internet. Okay. So this internet is really interesting. Uh, it is this powerful free medium and it's something like, I know that it's going to continue to get bigger and bigger. And I just knew I needed to jump in. So I was, I was listening to a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk yeah. and he's like, just, just document, document, document. So the very first video you can see at the top there was the first one I did. I just had a guy that makes good videos. I said, just follow me into a Sonic because every, every spring we do shake national shake competition. I'm half price shakes after eight. We're not doing it this year because a lot of stores aren't even open after eight right now um, because of, you know, so many restrictions and so forth. But I said, follow me. And so we went in and we kind of did an undercover boss, but I was not undercover. But we kind of just did a boss that really can't do much, which yeah. is what I was. And uh, it turned out really good. So I put it on Facebook and uh, people really seem to connect. So they're like, that's my Sonic. So what we started doing with it is basically just local marketing, uh, put it on Facebook initially just to let people kind of get connected with their own. I put it, just put it on my Facebook page, just personal. And, um, and then we started putting it on YouTube. So it's not huge on YouTube, but what I use it for is marketing. Like every month we come out with a new one. I try to introduce them to either a local business or um, first people working at my stores. And then we, we sample whatever the new product is that month. But it's, so it's kind of like a community building. And then what happens is if I get someone local who has a good following or they have a really positive influence in the community, I only have positive people on there. I want my brand associated with positive influences. So, but anybody, it's so weird. I mean, if you say, oh yeah, I got a YouTube channel. I mean, 300 people might watch the video, but if you got a YouTube channel, people will, will get on it. They're like, I'll, I'll be on your video. That'll be great. Matter of fact, people ask me all the time, when can I come be on your video? <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, we have the video. These, these people right here on this thing called Christ Fit Gym. It's just an amazing. So I really am, am trying to, highlight and promote other great businesses in town and then they cut here's a national hockey team man they're fantastic we got the national champions hockey team. way to like really build community too right yeah yeah so we have fun and people connect with it i don't know so yeah. it it i don't know how, we do have really good volumes but we already had good volumes uh but people definitely seem to be connecting with their sonic yeah. And so for the long term, I know that I'm just slowly getting into video right now. I mean, I put it, like I said, one video a month, which is what are you talking about those are like so well made, those videos on YouTube. Well, uh, I had a lot of help for sure. Um, but um, yeah. So anyway, so we're, we're growing up, but I think it's for the future. I just had to get in and I don't know how we're going to escalate that house. I know you're supposed to begin first with the end in mind. But uh, I didn't have the total. I don't have the total end just in start. mind. All I know is it's just start. just start. Yeah, that's another book. There's a lot of good books. And when we just were talking, start. like, I, I really liked a phrase you said that everyone's an influencer, right? Everyone. Right. Tell, tell our audience, like, what, what you meant by that. 
Well, like I say, when I, um, when I have local folks on, um, like one was my favorite. Okay. So I have a, a partnership with a local driving school. So there's this, this couple and they teach, um, they just teach driver's ed and they, they're the driver's ed class around here and they'll have 30 or 40 people in each class. So I give them free coupons for cherry limeade. So whenever they, whenever somebody passes the class, when they graduate, they give them a thank you card and they put a two oh. cherry limeades in. So, Hey, you got your driver's license. You got to go to Sonic. So they are influencing their folks by using that. And then I made a, I made a video with them where they were kind of teaching me how to drive, which was funny. And then uh, we drove to the Sonic and had shakes and we talked about their business. We talked about the shakes, but they put it on their Facebook page. Right. And then, um, but everybody has people there around. Um, What a great way to just cross promote basically. Right. Yeah. You're you're sitting in a Sonic talking about a driver's ed business. Right. It's yeah. it's a great I mean, I, I advocate for collaborations all the time because I think it's it becomes win win. Right. You highlight someone mm-hmm. and they highlight you and it's a great partnership, great conversation. I mean, look at us now. Like we yeah. <laughs> I mean, we went from commenting at Video Marketing World to doing a live session together. So right. it's importance of collaboration just going oh sanchit asks how can technology further support sonic in your opinion um, maybe changes upcoming with 5g you know yeah 5g is a big deal um so <clears throat> you know moving forward is so painful uh, this, this app that we're using right now 95 percent of the time people love it five percent of the time they want to kill us uh, but you've got to get through that point to get to the 99% of the time. And hopefully the 99.9% of the time, the app is a fantastic way. And now with the COVID it's fantastic because they can, it's, you know, it's touchless. You can order and pay on your app and you can just come to the Sonic and we bring it out. But in the far the future goes, it, it's very interesting when you think about, um, everyone I think is going to start going to this, to a lot more delivery. So if you have delivery, for, for Sonic, we've got curbside come and pick up. But if you've got a delivery system like Chick-fil-A, they do a lot of catering. Um, I think Chick-fil-A and even Buffalo Wild Wings is working on this right now. They're going to start working on uh, maybe putting their building off the main path and do just delivery only from that building. So instead of having to have a, you know, a, a million dollar, literally, you know, 600 to a million dollar piece of property uh, on a main street, you can go two blocks off that street and you can build a business that you can just do all your deliveries from. So that's going to help that way in technology. Wow. Um, I think that uh, driverless cars are going to be a big, big, big deal. So you'd better be able to get in your driverless Uber mm-hmm. and tell Alexa, what should I eat? And then Sonic's going to have to, you're, we're going to have to figure out how to be the first thing Alexa recommends. Yeah. Um, so technology is going to get very interesting. Well, uh, and I mean, super, super Alexa. far future. Simpson was like, how about facial recognition at the drive up? <laughs> you know, and you guys don't, you probably don't want to know this, but you, when you put your credit card in and we know everything about the last thing you ordered, everything you've ever <laughs> done at Sonic. Yeah. So, but you can't tell people that it's creepy. It is. But everybody. I mean, well, know. I mean, the Would amount of like stuff we put out on social media. Anywhere? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. For sure. Technology yeah. is, is, um, it's very interesting because it seems super cool when it works, but mm. then it doesn't work. And then you're so fried in the good old day. Well, the bad old days, whatever, you know, we took orders by hand when I was a kid, we didn't even have calculators. Yeah. Um, and there was no computers to crash. But now if your computer crashes, you're just done. You're just, you're we just are. Done. I mean, and think of, Oh my gosh, if we didn't have Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. <laughs> we, we go nuts. Like there's the, and, the TV is on Wi-Fi. So, yeah, yeah, they're constantly yeah. Uh, they're constantly, um, you know, hacking, trying to hack uh, credit card systems. You know, we pay so much more now uh, just for cybersecurity. It's a huge thing, cybersecurity. So um, technology, as far as how is it going to make Sonic better? Um, again, they're trying to try to utilize the app to uh, recommend things to people. Um, we, we, we have text alerts we send out right now. Um, yeah. We want Up Alexa. Fox says we need to in be there. able to tell Alexa we need Sonic, right? <laughs> yeah, we're def- definitely working on that. <laughs> oh man, 
And one thing I wanted to ask you also is like, because mm-hmm. a lot of times, sometimes especially in the job search world and in the, you know, like we're, we were talking that you and I are both Gen X, right? And right. Um, it's not mm-hmm. kind of, we didn't grow up in a era of like, put yourself out on video, right? It's only in the last kind of, I don't know, five years that I think video has mm-hmm. really, really exploded, right? right? So for those people out there that are kind of still hesitant to get on video and saying mm-hmm. they're too old or it's not our generation and all that, like, what would you say to them? I would say that every single format that's come along, we always say that. I mean, in 2006, Gary Vee had his first uh, uh, wine library. If you're not familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk, he is the you know the leading influencer in, in social media marketing. He had a wine store and he's like, let's sell wine online. And he started a YouTube channel before anyone knew what YouTube was. Um, and all you know, and all of a sudden now everybody uses YouTube. Facebook was the devil, you know, and now my mom is on Facebook 24 <laughs> seven, uh, you know, and, and everything. And you know, they've, been, they've been pushing TikTok forever uh, for the last six years. I hate TikTok. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, heck, you better be on TikTok. You know, I finally said, well, they're, they're right. So um, whatever we think is above our head right now or that we're not going to use, we are. It just keeps getting proved over and over and over because people are just so social. So even even right now, it's like, well, nobody can see each other. Everybody has to go to your house. Well, now, well, that's okay. We'll just see each other on computers, you know. Yeah. So sure. I would I would say uh, about using video, um, you know, don't be scared because, uh, you know, <laughs> what I, I tell you, when I put the first video, okay, do be scared. You're going to be scared. Are you ever scared when you put a video? I was sweating. I was. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. My heart was pounding well, so fast. Well, my first it video. It was. And then how'd it go? If um, it, it was, I mean, looking back, there were tons of mistakes I made, but I still mm-hmm. posted it, and mm-hmm. it's just something to laugh at now because right. I can't get to here if I didn't start. And right. I, I always try to tell people like, we can't get to our. 500th video if we didn't even mm-hmm. do the first one. Um, yeah. And every one of them, we learn something and we're growing and we get better mm-hmm. and better. Yeah. And I do, I'm like a motivational kind of guy. I read a bunch of junk, but so Hussein Bolt, the fastest man in the world. I tell people, I tell these kids this stuff. I said, who's the fastest man? Who's Zane Bolt? Well, 20 Olympic medals. I could beat him in a hundred yard dash. If he gave me a 75 yard 90 yard head start. But if he let me start and let me get 90 yards before he start, I would beat the fastest man in the world. And that's what I see people doing all the time. Now they say, well, they're waiting for a different opportunity. You know, they've got all the potential in the world and that they just won't start uh, because you're afraid you're going to be embarrassed. Um, you know, I see a lot of people that want to start a business and you get right up to that line and then no, something, something's not quite right. But starting is super important because you can't get, to, like you said, 500 videos until you do the first video, you know, and the good thing about video. So like if, if you're in a restaurant, you could you could hurt yourself, you know, because it's the property costs so much. The building costs so much, all this stuff. You know, we're we're two million dollars and three years in before we open the doors on a new Sonic now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can start a video. You put it out there. And if it's terrible, nobody will watch it anyway. Yeah. You know? yeah. But yeah. when I hit, send, I mean, you know, nobody would see it. Who cares? There's so many videos out there. So you Sean, don't see it. You know, Sean Cannell on YouTube, one great thing he said was, um, let your time in obscurity prepare you for popularity. And I, I love yeah. that. Like, yeah, nobody's watching anyways. So make all your mistakes now. <laughs> yes. So and when then, I hit send yeah. that first one, I was just a nervous wreck. I mean, literally my stomach flipped so many times before I hit send. And I finally just hit send and I went to bed. Yeah. And then I woke up the next morning and it had 1,400 views. And all these people were talking about how much they love Sonic. And I was like, wow, that's love not it. what I expected. Um, and every time my stomach, the more my stomach hurts before I send one, usually the better received it ends up being. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's um, true. Like the yeah, the stomach test. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Anne Small said, we have to try even when we're afraid. Uh, what's that Albert Einstein quote? How many failures before success? Yeah, multiples. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like JK Rowling, right? Wasn't she um, rejected by tons of book editors before Harry Potter finally came out, right? Like oh, yeah. tons mm -hmm. and tons. Um, yeah. We do have another quest question from Sanchit. He said, worker safety. Um, what are we doing for that now? You know. Right. And that has been that has been such a moving target, you know, from day one. Um, you know, first they said, oh, mask or, you know, mask. You don't need mask. You know, don't wear a mask because masks are what people have it. And they wear a mask. Uh, so we were behind the eight ball on that because we started trying to find some because we saw that, you know, we're going to be at a point where we do need these masks. And uh, when we, by the time we started ordering, it was taking weeks and weeks for them to come in. So uh, I said, hey. Everybody make your mask, get your mom to make a mask, somebody make a mask before it was kind of mandated. Um, yeah. What we do now is, you know, we have, we have what the CDC recommends uh, on as far as, you know, cleaning and there are bleach solutions and all these things, but we check everybody at the door. We have a long, a long list of, of health questions and that's given a lot of people just asking those questions is giving people right. knowledge about what to look for. So people, right. we have had several people call us in and say, I can't, I can't taste very well. I think I better go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. So just our questions every day are giving people, um, you know, the ability to self diagnose of things they didn't realize uh, we're taking, um, you know, we, we wear the mask, we wear the gloves. So something the Sonic has always done is we wash our hands every 20 minutes. We have a timer in the store. Oh, wow. Every 20 minutes, it's like, wash your hands. And uh, and hand washing is the number one thing. Um, Absolutely. For protecting, you know, protecting people. Um, so, awesome. you know, we're following all the CDC guidelines um, as, you know, as best as, as they come out, as they change, you know, we do, we do what's, what's recommended. Sure. And Ryan Chapman piped in, I think in relation to your earlier comment, he said, get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's what's, that's yeah. what's needed these days. And, um, and even just adapting, right? Like you said, businesses adapting, pivoting, um, and then also just all these new changes that it's brought into our lives. And, mm -hmm. and even just doing video, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Right. For sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Any other questions in the feed for Paul? This is, I mean, the, our time is just flying by, Paul. <laughs> Holy smokes, 54 minutes. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, really. I mean, this is your, if it's a franchise, I don't know what people would ask. I mean, like I say, we've, we've, I'm trying to avoid it, you know, venture into video, and you're the video maven. That's how we met. At Video Marketing World. Video Marketing World, Scott, yes, for sure. And and one thing I think I want, and that's why I encourage a lot of people to chat in the feed and um, and get to know each other in the comments, because that's how you and I met. And I, I really want to kind of reinforce the, the power of engagement and comments in on social media, because mm -hmm. especially on LinkedIn, a lot of times... I meet new people, I interact with them in the comments. And then from there, we message each other and then get on a phone call, find common interests. You and I both realize we love Star Trek right. <laughs> and Star Wars, right? right? right. And, uh, and it's, I mean, and then from there, we find common things that, you know, we're mm -hmm. both advocates for a great customer service. And mm -hmm. um, I think it's just a, um, it's a great way to develop a relationship mm -hmm. from commenting. Um, I would think so. I've, I've met a lot of people in this video marketing world, world, uh, just in the last year and a half since I've been trying to do video. I went, I went to a convention, the first a video marketing world um, conference, and you start meeting people. But I would just recommend on something like this because I've, I've got a lot of friends out there now. It's very interesting, um, and just you. So what I was looking for when you were speaking. Um, so you were at the video marketing world. If y'all weren't, if y'all weren't there, uh, Mark Cuban opened up for Fanny <laughs> he came and he said, you know, he did, he warmed up the crowd a little bit just to get us to get ready for Fanny. And she came on and it was just really remarkable. I thought you were just doing a great presentation. 
So what I try to do is not just say, hey, great job or good stuff. I try to really, really search for something that people people are doing that's that's remarkable or really good. So I made some, I think, some specific comments about, man, that was a great point right there. Just to let you know that I appreciated that you had worked and, and brought something good. And uh, you were like, thanks. But of course, you had a million things going on. <laughs> Um, and then I think on LinkedIn, I probably reached out to connect with yeah. you on LinkedIn and you yeah. checked out Sonic Wave or whatever. That's where but, we are um, now. I looked up uh, the red, the red, red bull slushy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw your red bull slushy video. Yes. That, that was a fun one. My dad was in that one. Watch that. Say so like, like old Merlin. Um, but no, I would just recommend anyone to, to get in these things and start connecting with people in the text. Uh, but look for, look for, um, you know, it's just specific things they're doing to let them know that you really are gaining value from it and reach out that way. But anyway. So last thing, very, very difficult question. What is your favorite Sonic meal? <laughs> uh, man, I mean, 99% of the time when we travel, we go to Sonic a lot. I get a mustard burger with onion rings and a Diet Coke with uh, cranberry, but if I'm splurging, if I'm like, and Sonic that people use Sonic as a, as a way to uh, reward themselves. If I'm rewarding myself, I'm going to get a bacon cheeseburger at chili jalapenos, uh, chili and jalapeno peppers. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I, I'm literally hungry right now. <laughs> Heck yes, you are. But I will say, I don't want to, uh, so, uh, Sanchez is asking some interesting questions and I don't want to make it look like I'm trying to dodge his questions at all. Well, let's um, see. Maybe I missed it. He's, he's asking now, he's, he's going into some super future stuff. How about ah, a system which scans all within the perimeter? And um, you know, like I say, we are, it, it, it is it is a very tough situation right now because we're doing all that, all that we know to do and all that we are required to do um, to, to keep our folks safe. Um, but as far as being, and, and we do, so for the on the very first day, this is kind of crazy stuff. So we said, well, what what can defeat these viruses? So we found these ozone generators. So mm -hmm. we ordered 40 ozone generators. We have an ozone generator going in each of our stores every night, which yeah. is helping is helping some. The main the main problem, the biggest challenge is, is when you uh, check people at the door and we check them and we ask them their temperatures and we do take their temperature. We aren't able to. He's asking if we're able to take guest temperatures yeah. and we're not. Uh, mm -hmm. But we do have masks on all our employees that wear masks. Today, my server had a mask. Yeah. And you got the wind blowing and hopefully that's going to reduce it. Um, but there, you know, there's there's only so much that we can do. You know, um, we you know, we try to keep our distance. The CDC, uh, there's so many acronyms so finding out more and more. Um, but it just says, you know, close personal contact for an extended period of time is dangerous. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, close is within six feet and they can't really tell me what uh, extended period of time is. So we just try to, we just try to keep them moving, move them quickly, you know, get in yeah. and get out. And um, it's, I understand why a lot of parents don't want their kids to, to come work at Sonic, but um, at the same time, a lot of folks need their paychecks. So we're doing everything we can. Absolutely. The main thing is the washing the hands though. Yeah. Uh, That's I'm every 20 minutes. I'm out a lot. And mm -hmm. I wash my hands a lot. Mm -hmm. So, and then um, real quick, Sharon, how have you approached the menu items for more health conscious people? <laughs> people always ask me. This is a great question. Um, Let's get who was that? Karen. Karen. Okay. So, uh, every Sharon. Hi, Sharon. So everyone. <laughs> tries this whole healthy thing. So it's very interesting over, over the, over the history of Sonic, uh, the old, the old um, CEO of Sonic corporate, his wife was a nutritionist and they're always trying to put in salad and we tried yogurt and all these things. And people don't come to Sonic for that. They don't. I mean, we, I'm going you know, there for something sweet. <laughs> yeah. Taco, Taco Bell, Taco Bell tried, uh, you know, that free cheese, it, it didn't last. You know, Sonic, we've had salads, we've had frozen yogurt, we've had several things. So I think what we are is we're a bit of a niche, you know, we're a niche, niche, yeah. niche. And um, people, so so this last year at Sonic Convention is really cool. They brought in customers from all over the country, just really our demographic. Mm 
and there was some working moms and a and uh, you know this this folks they're just regular Joes you know and Janes and we're like we were able to ask them questions I mean there's about a hundred of us in this room asking these six guests you know and 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 every session that I went to someone would say what do you think about healthy food you think we should have healthier and they're like no nah, if I'm gonna eat healthy I eat at home. If I'm going to Sonic, baby. I want a blast. Um, I will tell you, Sharon, what I eat at Sonic, because I eat there a lot. Uh, we have a good grilled chicken sandwich and an unsweet iced tea. Um, a regular hamburger with mustard instead of mayonnaise. We don't butter the bread anymore. Um, it's not bad. All our conies, although they're not especially healthy, they are less than 450 calories. Um but, you know, I think Sonic, I hope Sonic has finally figured out that we are just not, you know, just we yeah. we did salads and the kit would come where you could make a minimum of 16 salads at a time. And we'd sell four during the course yeah. of the day and you just have to throw them away. And the margins are so thin, you just can't do that. So For sure. Well, I mean, we've had tons of unfortunately, our time is up. Had a bunch of other questions. So, Sanchit, you should definitely connect with Paul. Yeah, man. Um, what, Paul, where's the best place to, to connect with you and find you? You're all over social media. <laughs> where yeah. do you check? I mean, if you just kind of want to see inside of Sonic or, or see what's going on, I'm a, uh, you can go to the Sonic guy on YouTube. Um, you can go to my Facebook page and instant message me. A lot of people do that. I get some interesting instant messages. Uh, I did not know this was going to be part of this deal. Um, uh, or LinkedIn, you know, for this cloud, I just really started getting into LinkedIn. Uh, just very actually after your presentation, I went and I actually put a, put a cover picture up, photo up and, and I yes, leaked yes. some things and yes. I'm excited about putting more. Um, and if you want to go to LinkedIn and tell me what you'd like me to talk about, I could make, um, I want to make more business oriented videos on LinkedIn. Yeah. So uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Send your suggestions. Sure. What do you want Paul to create video content around on sure. LinkedIn? Awesome. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then any kind of final thoughts, Paul, before we wrap up? Last words, <laughs> words of wisdom. <laughs> wow. I don't know, man. I've just had a very interesting, interesting road. I mean, if my dad uh, hadn't been a really poor, scruffy, scrapping kind of guy, we never would have got into the Sonic business. So I'm very thankful for him. And, uh, you know, it, good things are bad things. You just have to look at everything as they happen and realize that, you know, it may be good or it may be bad. You don't know. Um, but we're, we've done really well in the Sonic business. And I'm just very, very fortunate that, uh, that we have a business right now that is, um, that it has, is built into curbside, you know. So I would just recommend to everybody um, on this call, especially if you want to, um, you know, start, you know, look, look at your content, you know, follow follow someone like Fanny and just start making some video content. I've got a friend that's a realtor and she's just started, you know, explaining different realty, telling what the market is right now. You could just make videos about what, you, and something you told me when I, we were talking about this, you said, Paul, you think, that this is just common sense and there's things, you know, that people don't know, you yeah. know, so yeah. everybody does. Everybody up to does. you is, yeah. I mean, so, I, I just don't think about it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but people so, need to know. Yes. Yeah. So awesome. get on and share your content. And if it's not good, people will just scroll by they won't care. And if it is great, then you're going to get, you know, and at least you'll be, you'll start connecting with people. So just realize that when you try to hit send, your stomach's going to flip. That's okay. It does it for everybody. Even now, I mean, no matter what video, when you told me I was going to be on here, I'm like, oh gosh. And I'm sure everyone's <laughs> going to get nerves. Like right before every live, my, my stomach does a flip. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I still get nervous every time. But mm -hmm. well, you do it anyways. Like I have this hashtag, like hashtag do it scared. And, right, right. and there's a few minutes into it, then it's just like two friends having a conversation. Yeah. And, and that's I what always I love about it. Tell my kids, Franklin, we always watch Franklin, the, the turtle. Yes. He said, being brave doesn't mean you're not afraid. It means you're afraid and do it anyway. So there you go. That's what I got. So with that, I want to wrap up the interview. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And everyone has gifts. And shine your light. Share your gifts. 
and share it with the world through video. Thanks, everyone. Very nice. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Fanny. It was really good. I appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you.